Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk about cosy reading and why it makes us feel good. So I was kind of prompted to do this video by um, the Scary Sleepover Weekend, uh, which has been organised by Alex at the Bookubus, um, because one of the prompts for that is to read a cosy book. And it got me thinking about what is, for me, a cosy book. Um, and the book I originally chose for um, for the prompt was the kids from one of the Kids from Frame books, um, which is... Is it here somewhere? Yes. So this book, um, which I bought recently because it is, so The Kids From Fame was a TV show I loved as a kid, um, ironically. Um, so um, it seemed to me that reading a book like this that would remind me of my childhood would definitely be a cosy thing. Um, but then because um, the event Alex is, is organising is kind of horror themed and Alex's channel obviously is a horror themed channel, I thought maybe I should read horror. Maybe I should read a horror book instead. And one of the names that comes up whenever you talk about, whenever anyone uses the term cosy horror, the name that comes up is Darcy Coates. So Darcy Coates is, I think, an Australian writer who started out kind of self-publishing and has become more and more popular and has now got like a traditional publishing contract. And some of her older, you know, her older self-published work is being republished. Um, and she's just, you know, she's just pretty huge to be honest with you. Um, so I'm reading for um, for the scary sleepover weekend. I'm reading her book from below, um, and it and it is cosy, um, but it is a horror book. So it's about a um, a, um, a like a film documentary film crew um, who go diving to this um, sunken ocean liner um, that sunk like a hundred years previously in mysterious circumstances, um, and which basically is is kind of haunted. Um, and all of Darcy Coates' books are basically haunting books. In fact, many of them have haunting in the title. Um, but there is, nevertheless, despite the fact that it's kind of spooky and a bit scary, there is definitely something comforting about it. And it got me thinking about what is it that makes books comforting for us? Um, the other thing that made me think a lot about this was that um, uh, Andrew from It Came From The Page, um, who's doing um, Kelsey at Slime and Slashes, like Summer Slashes event, um, was talking about the the pleasure of slasher films and the the I guess psychological fulfilment of slasher films being around the fact that they are survival stories, which I thought was fascinating because you think about slasher films as being about people dying, you know that's that's what most of the runtime of a slasher film is is p it's people getting killed. That's kind of the point of a slasher film is to show lots of people getting killed. But I think Andrew's completely right. I think the the message or the thing you take away at the end of a slasher film is about survival. Because one of the characters, you know, the main character, typically the final girl, um, is a survivor. They survive. They find, you know, they find the strength within themselves to survive against horrific, you know, un unthinkable odds. Um, so last night, my wife and I watched the second Nightmare on Elm Street film, which actually has a final boy rather than a final girl, albeit the there is a very strong female character in it as well. And in that book, Jessie, who's the, who's the protagonist, goes through just horrific stuff. Um, but at the end, you know, he gets through it and he survives. And it's, um, you know, the, end's really, the ending is really cheesy and smiley and sunny. Um, but you do, it is uplifting. Um and it made me think about, you know, even something like, um, even something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is, you know, a horrifically harrowing film. And and even at the end, you know, at the end, the, the, the final girl in that is completely broken and insane. Um, but she does survive. Um, and I think that is something important. Um, and I think it, what, what it occurred, what, what occurred to me was, sorry, I'll try and speak properly. What occurred to me was um, that one of the things that is is innately comforting in in film and and in books is repetition and um, familiarity. So we know going into a slasher movie, you know what's going to happen, and that's part of the fun of a slasher movie is is deciding who the final girl is. You know, guessing which character is going to be the final girl, and you can you can usually do it. Um, so the fact that you know what is going to happen is comforting in itself. Um, and the fact that everything is, um, is, is familiar and they use, you know, they use 
um, tropes over and over again. So, you know, a, a great example is, and this was in, not in Night on Elm Street, but it was in um, Slumber Party Massacre, which I also watched this week for um, for um, for the, like the Slashers, Summer of Slashers event, um, is, is the character who's a joker. So you get a character who um, consistently, throughout the film, pretends to have been killed or pretends to have had a horrible accident or whatever, um, and actually then goes, oh, it's just a prank. And then and then at some point they do actually get killed by the killer and, and not the rest of the class all think it's a prank. Um, so it's, you know, it's that kind of trope that is completely familiar and is comforting in its own right because you, you are part of the, you're part of the movie in a way. You're, you're, you are, um, you as the viewer, if you know what's going on, you are linked in with the makers of the film. And that is really comforting. Um, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? It's a feeling of belonging. You feel like you are, you know, with your with your people um, when you get that feeling. And similarly, you know, with books and so with the Darcy Coates books, the thing that's um, that's lovely about this book is the friendships. So you've got this gang of people who are working together who do kind of rub up against each other the wrong way sometimes, but they are all, you know, they are definitely in it as a team. Um, and and that's a really nice feeling, and you you do feel like when they're diving down into this wreck to um, to you know to investigate it, she writes it in such an immersive, no pun intended, way that you do feel like you're part of the team as well. You feel like you are there with them, and you do grow to to care about the characters. But equally, you feel part of a team with Darcy Coates because you know what you kind of know what's going to happen. I would say you completely know what's going to happen. There are some surprises there. But she definitely uses tropes. Um, she definitely um, deliberately makes the story feel quite familiar in terms of you know the pacing and the way things develop and the different characters and things like that. So you f you feel like you're in on the joke if you like, and that in itself you know as I say is is definitely a comforting thing. So it got me thinking about you know the fact that you can read horror or watch horror as something cosy, something that to you is you know makes you feel relaxed and calm um, and happy um, and that feels you know it kind of feels counterintuitive you know when you immediately if you think about a cozy read I, I would think about something like um, I've lost the bloody book again now I would think about something like the kids from fame book which is a you know a cheerful nice book about a group of oh, I haven't read it yet but I assume if it's anything like the show it's about a group of you know plucky kids at the, the New York High School for the Performing Arts you know singing and having fun together um, and you know overcoming their own personal obstacles to, to become great singers or dancers or you know what have you um, so that definitely feels cosy and when I watch um, you know channels like Gina Stania so Gina Stania talks about you know, cosy reads a lot. And her cosy books are, you know, books about small, you know, small villages in England and, you know, school teachers, and I'm stereotyping a bit here, so apologies, Gina, Gina, but, you know, so, you know, school teachers working with the local kids and, you know, just happy stuff, nice stuff, people, you know, the sense of community and that kind of thing. So that, you know, you can immediately see how that's cosy. But I think horror can be cosy too. And I think, you know, when you think about... Um, the different kinds of books that give people that feeling of of comfort because of the familiarity because they know what's going to happen because of the coziness and I think really importantly because they can connect with a character in the story and feel comfortable that that character is going to get through it so even if there is horrible shit going down that character will survive to the end so it is safe as a viewer or reader to hook into that character um, and it occurred to me that a type of book that you would never think of as being a cosy read um, that actually probably is and I say this in a completely uninformed way because I've never read a book like this but there are loads of books at the moment that are um, autobiographies of people who've gone through horrible abuse as children and have survived it yeah. So like I think um, A Child Called It by Dave Peltzer is probably the most famous one. But since the success of that book, there are dozens, if not hundreds of them. Whenever I go in a bookshop in the UK, I see books like that on the shelf. You know, they, they 
but new ones are published every week, which is, you know, and it's horrible that there are so many people out there um, who've gone through that kind of thing that new book can be published every week, um, clearly. But, you know, it's a very, very popular, um, you know, kind of subgenre of, of nonfiction. And it occurs to me that there's probably comfort to the people who read that book in that, in that they, you know, no matter how horrible the things that the the writers of these books have been through, they have managed to survive. They have managed to build, you know, normal lives for themselves to the extent, you know, to such an extent that they can write and publish a best-selling book. Um, you know, they have made successes of their lives despite the awful things they've gone through. Um, so it struck me that that is another type of cosy book that, that you probably wouldn't expect. Um, and for me, I think my cosy reads are mysteries. So I think there is something enormously comforting and satisfying about mysteries because they take a puzzle that seems to be impossible to solve and they solve it. Yeah. So the detective in a mystery manages to put all the pieces together and come to a resolution for the mystery. And I think there's something enormously comforting about that because... Um, because it shows you that there is no problem in life that can't be solved. Um, and as someone who is quite an, an anxious person and worries about things a lot, I think that's that's a really, really comforting thing, isn't it? So if you watched my weekly wrap up video yesterday, you will know that I am starting a new feature, um, which is at the end, towards the end of every video, I'm going to talk about a random book from my shelves um, very briefly. Um, but just to just to kind of give a bit of visibility to some of the random <laughs> trash around me. Um, so today's book is Captain Blood by Michael Blodgett. Um, so this is a book I owned years and years and years ago. And I'm pretty sure I never read it. So I think I bought a second-hand copy of it. Same cover as this one. Um, I remember it very clearly. I think I bought it as a teenager. And it was one of those books I just never got to. And then it end up, end, ended up getting sold off at some point. Um, but someone I follow on Instagram um, posted about it a while ago. And was saying it was fantastic. Um, so I thought I would pick up another copy of it. I have not read, yet read it. But I'm looking forward to it. So it's a... Um, well, it describes itself on the cover. There's a blurb from Mario Puzo, author of The Godfather, on the cover, who says it's one of the most savagely graphic and terrifying novels I've read in years. Um, so it sounds very good. I believe it's a, a revenge book. Um, I don't really know much more about it than that, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. So, yeah, if you've made it this far, especially if you read Captain Blood, um, then, well, if you've read it, let me know what it's like. But also leave the syringe emoji if you've got this far in the comments. So yeah, that's my thoughts on cosy reading. Do let me know what you think. Let me know what your cosy reads are, um, especially if they're reads that people wouldn't necessarily expect to be um, comforting. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and as always, hope you're safe and well. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.